I said, whatever you do, please let me come back out with these two things. I need them. <laughs> You are so attached to your breasts. <laughs> yes, I w I'm like, this w This is one of the things I was like, that's what makes a female. I'm like, I want to have kids one day. I want to feel that, you know, see mothers out there breastfeeding. I want to have all those experience. I really did want to have all those experience. I'm afraid of losing a breast that I can get back. A lot of people, you know, get fake boobs. So. 2012 was when you were diagnosed. What led to that visit to, to say, let me check? It was during one of my regular checkup, which I normally do my checkup once a year. But before I went in, I've, um, you know, sometimes you do those at home exams, which I recommend a lot of people to do because you know your body better than anyone else. And when I went in, I told my gynecologist, I was like, I feel a small lump in my breast. So, you know, he examined it, which I don't think he was too concerned either. Because you're healthy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're an athlete. I'm fit. I'm up. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. But, you know, he recommended me to send me to do a mammogram, which I did. And I remember they called me for the results back to his office. You know, he went through everything. It was like they saw the lump, but they weren't sure if it was cancer. He had me do a biopsy, mm -hmm. and uh, I did that biopsy. I think that maybe that Thursday or that Wednesday, and I got that call them that Monday. He confirmed that it was cancer. She was like, um, "I went ahead and make an appointment for you for the following Tuesday to come in to speak with your doctor." So, but that same when she called me that Monday. I was already scheduled to come to Jamaica that Tuesday for the national championship, mm -hmm. which I did, and I won. That's Nobleen Williams mm -hmm. Mills and Rosemary White on the inside. Mm -hmm. And look now at Nobleen Williams Mills to Sonia Richards outside. Nobleen Williams Mills gets past Sonia Richards Ross, and the world indoor champion is beaten by the Jamaican in front of the Jamaican crowd, 49-91 for Nobleen Williams Mills. So after you won, you came to Jamaica, you ran, you won, and then you went back home to the reality, to face the reality of it. No, I still went back home because I was like, maybe once I go in, they will tell me. It's not true. It's not mine. Mm -hmm. And I, for a week, yes, I honestly was like, yeah, they're gonna tell me it's not mine. But until you see everything in black and white and on that paper and your name is on there, yeah, that's when the reality of everything came in about surgery, about, you know, doing more tests, doing MRI, about everything. And what was your reaction? I sit there and I listen with my husband and I listen to every word he was saying until I make it to that car <laughs> and I start bawling my eyes out. How was your husband reacting to it? I think was he calm? He was calm. I think maybe inside he was crying, but he didn't, you know, I never see that emotion side of him during that whole time because I think he was giving me that shoulder and be like, you know, you can lean on me. Both of us can break down. So that was one thing I was so happy about that even though he was strong for me, sometimes I wish he could just, let me see. <laughs> let me see what's going on inside. Yeah. No, it's, it's a reality. Am I going to lose my breast? Am I going to be able to still compete as an athlete? How will my life change? I'm sure those were some of the questions. I mean, those were some of the questions. That, one, maybe more my breasts. I tell my doctor, my first surgery I went in, I said, whatever you do, please let me come back out with these two things. I need them. <laughs> You are so attached to your breasts. <laughs> yes, I w I'm like, this w This is one of the things I was like, that's what makes a female. I'm like, I want to have kids one day. I want to feel that, you know, see mothers out there breastfeeding. I want to have all those experience. I really did want to have all those experience. But, you know, the reality of it, you know, I came out from my first surgery a week later. I was informed that my results was inconclusive because of how low the lump was mm -hmm. to my inferior margin. So he was like, we gotta go back in to do another surgery. And I was, my husband Jamil was there at that appointment too. And he looked at Jamil and was like, if this was my wife, I would have her do a mastectomy. It was like, even a family member. 
it was like we're dealing with an aggressive cancer year. Wow. And I think some way I blacked out of that conversation. No, the others, <laughs> I was good. And I told him, I was like, I think I have to really think on this one. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I said, I'll get back to you in a couple of days. I'll make an appointment and I'll come back. So, you know, I think he gave me a number to a plastic surgeon. He was like, okay, if you decide to do this, you know, make a call. Reconstructive surgery. Yes. So, went on with my husband. You know, we sit and we talk about the pros and the cons of everything. But at the end of it, it was like, I can't live in fear. I can't live in, what if cancer is going to come back? Mm -hmm. I couldn't be unfair to my husband. I couldn't be unfair to my family. You know, you support me, but I'm afraid of losing a breast that I can get back. A lot of people, you know, get fake boobs, so why I can't? <laughs> <laughs> why not? <laughs> why not? So but you decided that, yeah, you're going to go ahead and remove the breasts. Yes. But when I went back to him, I think he was surprised. I was like, okay, if you take in one, just take both. I told him, I was like, we take both of them. I was like, because at the same time, you still have the risk of, you can have cancer in the, in the other breast, mm -hmm. to be honest. So even though I went with the mastectomy, I, I'm still at risk. So, you know, finding the chance of reducing this thing coming back, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I have to do. When I did my first surgery was three days after the London Olympics. So mm -hmm. I literally leave from the medal stand to a plane to an hospital bed in a span of three days. So I was pretty much off season for that what August, mm -hmm. September. My first surgery was in August. My second surgery was in September, my um double mastectomy. It, it was hard because even after doing the mastectomy, um, my margins still weren't clear. Mm -hmm. So they really had to go back in for a third surgery and remove, you know, a little bit more of the flesh of the breast. Even though by now it was all skin because they removed. So that was the third surgery. So I think that was maybe a month or so after mm -hmm. the second surgery. I mean, I wasn't thinking about training then. I'm trying to think about, Lord Jesus, I'm going through all of this. I'm going through surgeries and surgeries and surgeries, and I'm like, Give when is it going to, yeah, when is it going to end? You know, what, so it was there doing the surgery, and then once I did the mastectomy, mm -hmm. the double mastectomy, you know, um, my surgeon was like, okay, this is what I, you got to do. You can't be outside in crowd for about six weeks. I said, not even the mall. It was like, we got to risk every chance for you to catch an infection. Oh. And I was like, okay, how many weeks? Six. I said, I can't do that. I can't stay in the house for six weeks. Oh, that was the worst six weeks. It was boring as hell. <laughs> it was a whole year before I even, most people knew what was really going on. But once I decided to share, you know, it was just about everybody was telling me a little bit about their story and something else different going on in their life. And for me to be an inspiration to them, I was brought to tears. Mm -hmm. I was really brought to tears because I was like, I did not know that telling my story, sharing my story was affecting so many people's life. And for me to even not know about a lot of them, it was moving for me. Do you live differently now in terms of how you interact with person? I have a new perspective on life you know um one thing i i realize and i understand now that i can't judge people because i never know what's going on in their life i never know um what they're going through i don't take things for granted no more you know because one thing i've learned that you know i didn't know if i would make it through surgery you know, because anything, it's surgery, anything do happen. Mm -hmm. Things can go wrong in there, to be honest. I mean, so I look at I look at life different. I look at people different. I mean, I feel like if you're not gonna be for me, then I don't have time for that because life is too short. It's either, you know, you're gonna be there and you're gonna support me and you're gonna do what you gotta mm -hmm. do and be a true friend or, tr you know, that true person to me because at the end of the day is, 
I'd rather give my time to somebody else that don't even know me and I can help than waste my time with somebody that don't even need me around. A lot of guys sometimes don't stick around for the for the worst of everything, but I have a true guy. It's somebody being a rock to me. But one thing I've learned that and for me, I was like, cancer not gonna take everything that I have. So if you have battling cancer, no, you know, no matter what type of cancer you are, you know, hold on to the person you are. Don't give up hope awesome. because that's something you gotta hold on to. I'm